back, babies. It's your girl, AJ, up in the building. I am the owner of AJ Unique Creations, baby. Now, today we'll be doing something with embroidery. So I haven't did an embroidery video in a couple months. <laughs> so I decided let's go ahead and hop on here and let's do one. So I have an order for a custom embroidered mama sweatshirt, but instead of using baby clothes, we'll be doing the pictures inside. I did this type of design, embroidery design a while ago and I felt in love with it that I started making it available on my website. You could put the basketball pictures of your kids inside of there if you're a basketball mom or you could do pictures of the graduation pictures. It's so cool and amazing that I felt in love with doing that. I have did it for like a grandma sweatshirt. It's a grandma and pictures of her grandkids in there. This is a forever keepsake, I promise you, you guys, because we are making a custom fabric ourselves. So when I say that, we would actually be making the fabric ourselves like we are going to get a plain white polyester fabric and we're going to make it ourselves so make sure you guys like comment subscribe ring the bell so you can always watch all my videos and you don't miss a beat of anything but make sure you keep on watching to see how we do this together but other than that let's go ahead and get started with today's video let's not make it too long let's go guys so at this moment i am printing out my design i'm using my good old a sub paper nothing new nothing less that's what we're gonna use i'm using 8.5 by 11 i could have did 8.5 by 14 but my idea is to kind of do one full press and just cut as much as i need for each word not each word each letter <laughs> but we are going to are we going to that don't make sense you guys we are going to be doing the mama sweatshirt and this mama sweatshirt is going to be involving the pictures so the customer sent over all her pictures that she wanted in this now this one is a little bit different because we are doing a collage usually i just do one picture in each word place it where it needs to be but this mama wanted to do a collage for each sweatshirt that she ordered so i'm just going to record us doing one sweatshirt because each one does take time now i'm printing out everything now and i'm going to press it so this is sublimation i am making my own fabric a lot of you guys always ask me like where did you buy your custom fabric from I make my own fabric for this type of sweatshirt so basically i have a polyester fabric that i ordered and i'm gonna press the picture on top of there the polyester fabric is just polyester fabric you guys honestly it's just whatever i could find on hand that's polyester at the time or i'm in the store usually i get it from hobby lobby order a good amount now I'm going to do this just like regular sublimation. That way, I feel like when you're doing these sweatshirts, you're doing it more unique and different. That way, you actually have a connection to these sweatshirts and they do last a very long time. Sublimation is a type of press that is embedded into the materials. I tell you guys this all the time. So when I'm pressing this into the fabric, this is embedded into the fabric it's not on top of the fabric the ink is inside of the fabric that's one thing i love about sublimation it is heat activated so even right now the color's not fully there it's a little bit dull once i press it into the fabric it's going to come to life and look so beautiful but at this moment it is printing out right now so i use my converted 4700 printer is a eco tank that i got a while ago and i'm just going to press it on some polyester fabric you guys this is just the first step of the whole entire process i'm gonna give you guys a nice close-up so this is the collage that the customer wanted and we're going to actually use this to do each letter so we have the m a m a because we're doing a mama sweatshirt now for her she did want to personalize it by putting their names underneath so this might be mama bear we're not doing pictures inside the bear at all now let's go ahead and press it okay so this is the fabric right here this is a piece of white polyester it's white on both sides i usually pick my stuff up from like hobby lobby or joann's i just look for polyester fabric so I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. So we just put in out the whole entire design. So here it goes right here. This is what I mean by we are making our fabric ourselves. This is a white plain fabric. And I'm going to press the pictures onto here to make a custom fabric. Basically with the pictures that they would like on here. Now some people don't like using too much tape. You don't have to really use tape. I just add a good amount. For me just because i don't want any ghosting or shifting so i just like to add tape just to hold it down a little bit i'm not too worried about the edges just because i'm going to actually end up trimming it down you're not going to really see the edges 
Once it's pressed, it's really just the pictures. So I'm not too much worried about the edges at all. Because usually, you know, when you have a square design or a full page design, you want to trim around the edges so it won't be that boxy feel. I'm not too much stressing about it. Now, I have a parchment paper underneath here just because I'm protecting my heat press. Not everybody do this, but that's just me. Parchment paper that I use is a non-stick parchment paper that I do get off Amazon. It's linked into my Amazon store um, down below. I have my heat press set at 401, just because I know how my heat press is. Once it press, it goes down. So we have everything taped, and we're gonna do by medium pressure. I'm doing a total of 60 seconds, you guys. So it's going to be 60 seconds just because for sublimation, you press everything at 60 seconds unless you are doing glass where you do like 180 or something like that. So this is the Starcraft 15 by 15 in the mint color heat press. A lot of you guys always ask me that on Instagram. And I'm going to let you guys know, I do not know if they even sell this no more. I don't even think this is in stock anymore. I think this is discontinued. I got it three years ago. How much was it? I got it three years ago. This was like my first heat press ever brought. So roughly probably like $300 or something like that, I believe. Don't too much remember fully. <laughs> so make sure you guys are checking that out. But I cannot wait to see how this come out. We got about 20 seconds left. I'm going to go ahead and get my heat gloves because the fabric will be a little bit hot. It is polyester. Now, this ink, once it is pressed onto the fabric, garment, whatever you're using, I tell people this ink is embedded into this design. It's just one thing that's cool about sublimation. It's embedded into the fabric. It's not coming out milk. Whenever it get washed, anything, it's not gonna fade. I feel like it shift a little bit because I see a little bit peeked up. Let's see. Oh yeah, the colors came to life. It did not shift, yay. This is what was left behind, nothing. Nothing was left behind, beautiful. And I'm gonna trim around this for each one that I need, but this is the design right here. Look at it, the colors came to life. So this is now fabric. This is a custom fabric that we just made. This is fabric, this is it's fabric. It's not a paper no more. How cool is that? Love sublimation. <laughs> And that's why I say sublimation is like, you could combine it with uh, multiple things and make something new. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and place this right back in here. I'm gonna leave it at 400 degrees. You don't have to, but I'm gonna go ahead and place that back in there. And I'm gonna get my heat and bun. Okay, so, oh, drop my scissors. I'm using heat and bun. This is how it looks. I'm using this heat and bun transfer so usually I would do an iron if this is like baby clothes or something like that but it's not baby clothes so I don't need to do an iron or anything so because of that I'm just gonna do it while I already got the heat press on I'm not gonna press this for a whole 60 seconds don't need a whole 60 seconds definitely recommend keeping the parchment paper on there just because this is very sticky if it gets on your heat press now you have glue like stuff on your heat press that you're not going to want and just to be sure i'm going to grab a lint roller because it just looks like pieces of lint is on here so i'm going to grab my lint roller and get some of this lint off of here just because it's like a little bit of lint is on there even though it's going to be on the bag i just don't want lint <laughs> All right, perfect. I'm gonna grab a new sheet of parchment paper just to cover this heat press. And once done, all parchment paper is going in the garbage. Like I said, I'm not pressing this for a full 60 seconds. I'm just gonna press it for a few. Honestly, it don't need that many seconds, probably about 10 seconds, five seconds. It don't need that much, but I'm gonna press it just because I already have the heat press on and I don't feel like setting up iron, iron and board. Don't need all of that. <laughs> it's literally at 400 degrees, so you definitely don't need to press that long. You just want to infuse the paper to the fabric. So this heat and bun is for fabric. This is a fabric heat and bun, so like a adhesive for fabric. This is so hot. So now the heat and bun is on the back of the paper. 
you put heat and bond on this just because when you are embroidering this is a fabric so eventually you don't want no fraying or anything to happen so you put heat and bond on there to hold the fabric and materials together for when it's time to wash you don't want no fraying on your applique designs so let's go ahead and let's get to embroidering I know you guys probably wondering like what is this clear paper back there so that is a waterable stabilizer but for my machine because I oil my machine daily I usually put it on here because sometimes oil can leak out now before I start anything I put my needle to needle one because I have to trace my design to make it make sure it fits in if you do not know if you do not trace your design and your needle hit your hoop frame you void warranty with your machine so I always trace my design even if I know it's going to fit in here I do this just because you never know some designs may not fit So I like doing a couple of tests and it also let me know if it's where I need it to be for the beginning of the design to make sure it's not too high or too low from the neckline. And for me, I'm going to do a slow trace. If you had a machine like me, the slow trace is a hard. So I'm doing a slow trace just to make sure the top part is not touching the needle. It's not touching the frame. The machine is not like in embroidery mode is not in mode to embroider. So honestly, I could bring this down a couple inches. It don't have to be all the way up here. This tape, let me know where I want my design to start, honestly. So I am a little too high. Yes, I am too high. So I'm gonna bring this down some more when it goes. So I'm gonna just let it finish out and then I'll bring it down. So you always wanna do this for all your designs. Even if you know it fits, just do it because you will void your warranty if you do not and your needle hits your hoop because it can cause major problems with your machine and you void warranty. So if they need to come out and fix it, you're not paying about you know, $800, $300 because you gotta pay for their plane tickets and stuff to come to you to fix your machine. So just take a few seconds and do it. It doesn't take that long. It's not that big of a deal. It's better than paying somebody to come fix your machine and this machine is not cheap already. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down some. And after that, we can start embroidering. So we have traced everything fully out. Everything looks good. It is time to embroider. The last thing I'm gonna do is go underneath to make sure the arm is in between the shirt and nothing is holding. You do not want to embroider a shirt like it's not coming out. So we're just gonna make sure everything is good underneath here. Yep, everything is good. It's not embroidering the back of my shirt. So the M is almost done, just to make sure again that the shirt is not moving or shifting. 
So this was the custom fabric that we did. What I'm gonna do is cut out exactly how much I need. So I could see by here. So I'm gonna stop right there. So I'm gonna cut out exactly how much I need of the custom fabric that we just made. Make sure that this will cover the whole entire design. I don't want anything left out. Perfect. I could trim down some of this bottom piece. They give me less to trim around. Okay. All right, so I trimmed everything down. This is how it looks now. So this is the fabric. And I'm going to go ahead and peel off the heat and bun. So you will see how shiny it is that the heat and bun did adhere to the fabric. Now look at that. Now at the end we'll heat it all up. So that's why you want to use the heat and bun. So it can heat to the fabric underneath. So it's going to heat to the sweatshirt. Double check my arm underneath to make sure nothing is locked in all right and we're gonna press start i have mine on auto and manual mode at this moment to do this if you have this machine or depending on what your machine is i recommend putting on auto manual mode so that way it stops after each stitch beautiful it's looking so good so far so i'm loving that about it it is looking good Once it's done, I'm going to go in and I'm going to trim around it. I have my two scissors. I have my embroidery scissors and my duck scissors. I'm going to use this to trim around the design. So I did push out my hoop from the settings on the machine. And I'm just going to go ahead and trim around the M. You do not want to cut the stitches at all. If you cut the stitches, then let me cut some of the fabric. So the fabric will show that part of it. Depending on like just how close you need to get or just depending on how everything is, you may have to change between scissors. I do like both of these scissors. I did get them from Amazon. I believe they both in my Amazon store. I do have another pair that's like some real sharp ones that I use if I need to get the small pieces. And I just go back in and trim closely to it if I need to and I use the regular embroidery scissors. My key is wasting on my floor. My floor is so sticky now. I think they had some juice and wasted. <laughs> now, just depending on how many you have, usually this can take about 10 or 15 minutes, just depending on like the full design. And I do have to do the sleeves on here, but the sleeves is actually going to be last because this person did order three of these. So that means the sleeves I would do all at one time. So that's like a whole separate video. If you do want to know how I do my sleeves, I have a eight and one hoop video that I will try to find for you guys and pin it up. And there I'll show you guys how I do my eight and one hoop to use, well, how I use eight and one hoop to embroider the sleeve or the sweatshirts. Your goal is to get as close as you want to that thread without cutting the thread. It can be a little bit hard depending on how wide is your set and stitch and stuff. And you can take this out the machine. I'm just used to 
just a little bit less work for me. <laughs> okay, so now that it's done and I have cut everything around it, I'm just gonna go ahead and place the hoop back into the same position that it was in, fix the shirt underneath to make sure, and press start. Now, this is the same process for every letter that's in here. When we get to the bare part that's gonna be in brown, I will come back and we'll talk about that part. But other than that, I'm just gonna record and fast forward for you guys. Try not to make it so long fast forward because it's the same process. But some people may just wanna see this whole entire embroidered design process fully behind scenes. So I'm just gonna record and fast forward for you guys and play some good music. So I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, drop them down below and I'll try to ask it, answer it in the next video. But just let me know. I'm just gonna keep making sure the shirt doesn't move as it is embroidering. So we did do, just in case you are wondering, we did do a placement stitch. Now we're doing a tack down stitch and then the last stitch will be the satin stitch and then it will move on to the next letter. So I'll be back. Baby, you give me midnight eye. You whip up my appetite. Don't leave me in line and drive. Baby, you give me eyes and fire. You're gentle and we in the rain. You're some kind of butterfly. Baby, you give me midnight eye. You whip up my sweatshirt and after this one we have a sunflower to the right of this sweatshirt just next to bear she just want one sunflower other than that we are almost done like i told you guys i didn't record every single letter just because it's the same process from the first one it does a tack down stitch not tack down stitch a placement stitch then i put the fabric then a tack down stitch and then i cut around and then it does the satin stitch for the finish so it does that for each one nothing different I cut around everything. If you are wondering how do you make your applique design. So for this part, I just brought applique fonts off of Etsy's. I'm not that tech savvy so far with digitizing. Digitizing, <laughs> digitizing, it does take some time. I'm not gonna lie, it takes a lot of time. I would say give yourself some years. Don't just think out of like at the box, you're gonna say, oh, I could digitize this. It takes time because if your digitizing is not right, guess what? Your design is going to come out looking like trash. I'm sorry. That's literally the honest truth. If it's digitized bad, the design is bad. You will have missed stitches, jump stitches. The bobbin will be messed up. It, it plays a role more than what you think it does. So it's kind of crazy. Now for the full design, I would say it takes about an hour for this. Because I'm recording, it takes a little bit longer because <laughs> I got to pause it, stop, talk to you guys. So it does take longer. But I would say if I was knocking these out without recording or something like that, it would probably take me about an hour, 30 minutes, 30 minutes to an hour. Definitely just doing a mum part takes me about 30 minutes. So it just depends on just the steps you take and how you prep for it because I do do my preps ahead of time. I didn't show me hooping this shirt because I did a hooping video last time of me hooping my sweatshirts, I think, in my other embroidery video. But if you are wondering for my stabilizer on the back of the shirt, I do use a no-show stabilizer. Keyword, no-show stabilizer. It is a cutaway stabilizer. I get it off of Amazon. 
I believe it's in my Amazon store. If you are looking for it, if it's not, just let me know and I can go add it to my Amazon store. So basically, you always have to use cutaway stabilizer whenever you're doing any type of clothing. I recommend that because you have to think about when it gets washed. You don't want to use tear away because eventually it's going to tear away the more it gets washed. So I always recommend cutaway. I use two, like two layers, two sheets of cutaway no show stabilizer. I like the no show because when you use the regular stabilizer, you can kind of get like a box around it and you can see that box from the stabilizer. So I like the no show because it doesn't show when I'm using it. If you get what I'm saying, like it doesn't show that box on your sweatshirt. Think about it. So that's why I use a no show stabilizer. Now this part of the sweatshirt she has in brown. She's doing like a sunflower theme. So she has this part in brown. It's kind of cute on a navy blue sweatshirt. This is a size medium. I have done some sweatshirts up to 3X to 4X. Just depending on like the design. But I have done a mama sweatshirts to 3X and I haven't had any problems. Now, if you are doing something smaller, then probably you have to flip the design because you have to think about the sweatshirt going under. And it, like you have to think about the arm of the machine actually going through the sweatshirt. So in between the sweatshirt, so that way you're not embroidering the top of the sweatshirt and the back of the sweatshirt. If you get what I'm saying, because that's why I always put my arm down there just to make sure I'm not embroidering the back of the sweatshirt because once that happened, you can't take it out. <laughs> it happened once and that was a struggle and I wanted to cry, you cannot take it out, okay? So if you can prevent it from happening, try your best to, so that way you don't have to sit here and order a machine to get rid of the stitches. <laughs> So we're going to let this finish up and we will be done for the day. I do hope you guys enjoyed today's video. So make sure you guys are liking the video. Please leave some comments down below. I am loving the comments. I love talking to you guys. I love building a community with y'all. I'm so thankful for y'all because y'all are literally like my family. So I definitely appreciate you guys and I try my best to explain my videos. But at the same time, I want you guys to remember, I also try my best to just be me. Some people kind of complain about little things about my videos. That's just... The crazy part is just me. That's my personality. So I am thankful for the people that's here that supports me for me and that's encouraged me to do creative things and not being rude or disrespectful for my comments. I am so thankful for you guys. Y'all are my YouTube family. I love the community over here. You guys are freaking amazing and I'm so thankful for you guys. So definitely appreciate y'all. But we'll be back because it's almost done. <laughs>
press the whole entire sweatshirt. So I'm just going to take it out of the hoop. Just put the, put, put the hoop to the side. I'm actually going to lint roll this because it does have a lot of just extra fabric on the side for me cutting it. Just some of the debris and stuff like that. So I still have, oh goodness. I still have the stabilizer in the back of it. So because this is sublimation and I don't want to like get anything like pressed onto my heat press, I'm gonna actually cover this with parchment paper. So first I'm gonna lint roll this just to get all the lint out because you remember we did put heat and bun on the back of everything. So if it's there, it probably will stick to the shirt because we did heat and bun it. <laughs> So we're just going to lint roll it first. It is a good Monday. The only thing I don't get is why is it freaking cold? Like we were in Texas and I am cold. Like my husband woke up. He was like, it's cold today. And I was like, this weather? But then when he drove um, and went somewhere, it wasn't cold. I was just like, I don't get this. So hopefully by this wednesday or something that's not so cold because you know i think wednesday is valentine's day yes okay oh i did find me a new table that i want like a steel table i was looking on ikea at some tables too y'all but my husband was talking about ikea cheap for a reason so don't get it <laughs> i was like i ain't never heard of that before Nah, I don't want it no more. Just because you said it. he said for what you trying to use it for, they cheat for a reason. <laughs> so he's about don't get your table from the if you don't want it to fall on you. Y'all, he had me dying laughing when he said that. So here you go. A nice up close and personal of the whole entire sweatshirt. Now, do you see like what have their border hoops on there? Honestly, that's just gonna come out after you wash it. I don't even like tell people, oh, it's gonna just put some water or something. I don't like spraying water on people's sweatshirts, so I usually let them know something on there. After you wash it, it's gonna come out. Cause I don't like giving people wet stuff. Now, unless I have your sweatshirt for a while now, I do it because I know in about two days or three days, it'd be done dried up. Cause I'm not gonna put it in the dryer. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and get a new parchment paper. And I'm just going to heat press this for about 15 seconds. And the heat press is heating up, so it's about to be at 200. So I'm going to let it heat up to 300 and press it just like I do vinyl. Get up some. We got medium pressure. Press this for like 15 seconds. No, I don't have it set on the timer, so I'm just going to look at the time and take it off when it's ready. Now, I'm just pressing this just to fuse the custom fabric we did with the pictures on there because we put heat and bun on the back of it to fuse that heat and bun into the sweatshirt so that's why i say you want to use this whenever you're doing like cotton polyester any type of fabric that you're going to use to eat like in border with like even denim i recommend doing a heat and bun on the back of it just because it helps fuse it into the shirt so you won't have any fraying now when i mean fraying you have some type of fabrics that if you like cut it it frays i need to loosen this up some it frays yes and once you do that it actually press it down some too and beautiful y'all it came out so good all right and now everything is pressed it came out so pretty oh so happy this flower i actually got this sunflower off of etsy so it's so Pretty. I got sunflower off of Etsy's in the front. Mom, I got off of Etsy's a while ago. And the bear was already inside of my brilliant software. That Not the bear, but that front. So freaking pretty. Now, I do have to do the sleeves on the sweatshirt. But like I said, I have to do all sleeves on all the sweatshirts. I'm going to just do them all at one time versus doing each one separate and rehooping my machine. <laughs> Came out amazing. Let's go ahead and go. So we are done. First off, the sweatshirt. Did you see it? It came out freaking amazing. I swear, embroidering and actually putting the pictures of your kids and stuff inside there is so amazing. It's so unique and just different, and I love that. And y'all, I'm trying to keep my hands together because y'all know me. I do a lot of bah, 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 bum. So I'm trying to keep it together for y'all. <laughs> 
but the sweatshirt came out amazing i definitely loved it it was just that simple it wasn't too hard i would just say no about sublimation like you could do so much with sublimation you could combine sublimation with embroidery it's dope and it's amazing like look what i just created from nothing we literally made our own fabric like bro like, come on we made our own fabric how amazing is it to make your own fabric like that the the possibilities is endless and i think as somebody that sews as somebody that does embroidery or somebody that crafts sublimation something you need in your craft room just because of that because like I could make my own fabric and sew it. You get what I'm saying? Like, wow. I don't have to order from Joann's. I don't have to order from China. I can make it myself at home. All you need to know is just how to write tools. <laughs> now let's talk about the sweatshirt one more time. Now the color combination is different. It's popping, it's unique, it's different. Navy blue sweatshirt with the yellow thread for mama. And we got bear and brown. Sorry if y'all hear the kids. But look, it came out amazing amazing now the only pride too much now the front wasn't big of my like choice but the customer wanted the front like this because at the same time it kind of curves to everything and i guess that what ties it together is that the fun in the flower touches everything i think that ties everything together and make it one piece so i guess it actually looks dope but I love the way it came out. Do you like the way this came out? Like, let me know in the comments. And, like, let's try some other different colors and some other different designs, you guys. But I definitely had fun making this. And I will say it took probably an hour, two hours, because we did have to supplement the fabric, wait for the heat press to heat up, and everything like that. But it was definitely fun to make this using a 10 needle embroidery machine. Now, if you are interested in the same machine I have, I do have links down below for you guys. I do make a little bit of commission off of my Recoma links. Please help me out. <laughs> no, they do not pay me. I do not work with them. But if you are interested in buying a machine and you know you got information from me, click the links down below and I can make just a little bit off of your order that helps my small business grow and buy new machines for you guys. So I could be testing out to see if it's worth it or not. And then you know if you need to go throw that thing up in the trash or what? Or what? Okay. <laughs> But I hope you guys love today's video. So make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye.